it's Melana Mail and for this video I'm actually going to explain to you a uh, few tips and tricks about uh, paint or side and I consider these tips to be something that not many people know but still the kind of tips that are really useful so without further ado I think we can just go straight to the first tip so you ever know the feeling when you're drawing something and you have that nice drawing of yours but then there's that one little dot somewhere in the canvas and you have like tens thousands of layers and you don't know where it is and you want to find it well there's a solution so what you do is that you zoom in you play you press ctrl and shift and it shows you the layer which that dot is on as you can see i'm on the la layer one right now and this dot is on layer four and you can click it and it takes you straight to that layer and then you can just erase it <laughs> so no more unuseful dots here and there in the middle of canvas and 200 layers to look through in order to find it so the next tip I'm going to show you is how to use perverse opacity and this is something that I found to be kind of useful when I'm painting so I'm gonna do this and and now here's the ball okay so if you put your layer to preserve opacity it basically locks that layer meaning that you can only draw in this area so let's I'm I'm trying to draw to here nothing happens but then this happens okay so basically it locks down this layer so you cannot draw like now that I unlock it I can draw outside of it but if I lock it again I cannot draw outside of it so this is what you use it for and I personally found it kind of useful when I'm painting because I do uh, about I do one layer painting so it kind of helps me in some situations and the next tip is how to use clipping group so you take a next layer and you select it to clipping group and what happens is that you see this small um, like this red line and it means that it's linked with this layer below so what happens is that if you take a different color and you draw with it it's gonna be in this area as well but here's the thing, you can see that it goes outside of the border, so if you unclip it, it's going to look like this. So, these have different uses. And for dirt example, I'm going to show you how to use a selection source. And this is something that I feel, especially not many people really know what it does. And... And basically what selecting source is, is that it's sort of easy way to select something. So we are having this ring right here. So I'm going to put this to selection source and I'm going to go to bucket. Okay. And I'm going to create a new layer that's under this layer. And here's the thing. I want to color this part. And this is why it's so easy because you can just... Uh, select your color now you go here target and you make the target in the selection source and done that's easy way to kind of color inside the lines and the reason why this selection source is really useful because if you take a working layer it's going to go everywhere because this layer is empty okay but then if you take all image it's going to affect even this side so Selection source basically means that it only affects this. So you can either inside of it or paint outside of it. But it makes everything that's on this layer the sort of most important thing. Another thing that I want to kind of um, explain to people, which is... Um, increment one and it's gonna be in here so with this I'm actually gonna do a I'm actually gonna switch the whole background to gray 
and I'm just gonna do it like this so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a pink ball it's much more useful to use a pen or something and then I'm gonna go to here I'm gonna make this select turn source again and I'm gonna go to this magic wand again select turn source and I'm gonna I can actually do it this way you may have to fix it a little bit because even because the magic wand tool in Peter's eye isn't really perfect actually actually what I can do is I can erase that and I can just kind of paint over it with this so oops 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 we have a ball I'm gonna increase it I'm gonna go to new layer put it below here and what I'm going to do is that now that it's selected, it's important that you have the selection, you go here and press increment one. So selection, increment plus one. And you're going to got to do this many times, but here. And then when you go to say white, there, you get basic outline. And this is really useful when you are um let's say that you are writing something okay let's take this pen and say hello okay and you want this to be outlined again so we are just gonna oh we're gonna paint it and and then we are going to go to selection, increasement, increasement. We are going to increase the hell out of it. <laughs> like this. And now take a new layer. Go to color that you want. We're going to use white. And that's the way you can kind of create an outline for the things that you like. It's really useful when you are doing text or something and and you need to have an outline for it so another thing that I'm actually going to teach you is how to kind of create a circle around drawing so what you kind of got to do is that um, is that you go here and I'm actually going to copy this layer Copy. You need to have everything in one layer, but what you want to do is that let's just say that I want to kind of circle around her face. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take the pen, select, and sometimes if your oops, sometimes if your image is really big, what you can do is take the pen, just take the pen right here. Oh, oops, I keep messing up. So take the pen, then press, um, go to here, and then transform. You can press scale and free, free transform. I just use this and I press shift and drag it so that it doesn't lose its, like, otherwise it's just gonna be like this. But if I press shift, then I can just increase the size. You can also use the scale, but I just find it easier to use the transform. Basically do the same things. Um, so yeah, what you can do is that you can put it in here and then you can use selection. Like this and you may have to fix it around a little bit because the magic one just isn't perfect, but you kind of get the picture. But basically here's the, here's, um, the picture that I drew and I want to make it so that it's only this part. So what I'm going to do is that 
um, use the pen, the selection pen, and paint over it. And what you do is you go here, invert selection, and then you go here, clear layer. See? Now you have this only one thing. And you can even invert the selection back, and if you want, you can paint it at any color and it's going to show like this. So now you basically have a nice nice circle around your around your characters without much of work. And another thing that I wanted to show you is these icons here um red pin which is something i feel like many other people don't really know how to how to use so basically we're gonna as you can see actually as you can see uh, the white ball this and this is in different layers so let's say that i want to move both of these at the same time because if i just pick one layer then it's just gonna move the girl or if I go to this layer it's just gonna move the ball and it's it's really hard to kind of move them around so what I can do is that I can go to uh, each one of these layers I'm just gonna go to the layer with the ball and then I press the icon under the eye the eye is for show and hide if someone didn't know and press under it so that it's gonna create a red pin okay and what it does is that it links these together so that you can move them and you can even transform both of them at the same time like this. The only thing where you cannot use it is that if you select a certain area then it's going to, um, depending on the layer that you are, then it's going to just move that area only, which is a little bit of a shame, but you know, shit happens. Or I'm not sure if you can somehow like move this area where it's with both the flares, but you know, I haven't been able to figure it out at least. If someone has, let me know. So yeah, now that we have this nice, nice little thing, I'm also going to teach you how you can make a transparent background and you go to here and you press save as and then you I may actually get the canvas failed my side has been a little bit laggy so oops no idea what just what I just did let's say I may get the canvas fail but but let's see if it's gonna work um, oh, so what you basically do is that here's a pixel format. What this means is that the background is gonna be white. What this means is that anything that doesn't have a color, aka this background right here, it doesn't have a color even if it shows at white. As white, it's actually colorless. So each pixel have opacity. So when you choose this, yep. I got the canvas file, but that doesn't matter. You get the picture. So if you select the bottom option, what basically happens is that um, when you go to the picture, when you open the picture in your gallery, it's basically going to look something like this. So the background is going to blend in with the, you know, I know these aren't exactly the same tone, but there, I was able to hide it pretty well. So it's basically gonna look like this when you open it up. And I guess that's all of the tips and tricks I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you like it. Leave a comment. If you know any other tips and tricks with pencil side, just let me know because, you know, why not? So yeah, I guess that's it. Bye-bye!